Hello. Well, it's uh, a week now, less than a week, uh, towards a truly historic election. You Americans will be going through the same sort of process in 2020, when it'll be your turn to elect or reject President Trump's bid for re-election, because how that election turns out will determine the well, the direction of American politics for many years after the Trump administration is, is just history. But in Britain, there's an even more tooth and nail fight going on between, uh, basically, between the forces of democracy and the forces of autocracy. We have parties like the Lib Dems who've said that, given half a chance, they would simply scrap our democratic referendum, meaning they don't believe in the democratic process at all, and they're supposed to be the nice ones on the left. Then there's the Labour Party, which has been accused with plenty of justification of <clears throat> institutional anti-Semitism right through the middle of it, like the words through a stick of Brighton Rock. And people don't want to vote for that. Even people in towns where there are no Jews, and there are plenty of those in the British Isles, and you'd think people wouldn't be that bothered. But it's not really the anti-Semitism that's the problem, actually. It's the excuse. There are plenty of people in this country who have, <clears throat> as I have learnt from what I've seen underneath some of my videos, uh, who have, well, what I can only describe as medieval attitudes to Jews. Uh, and even many of those still wouldn't vote for the Labour Party now. And they might even say that it's because of anti-Semitism. But it isn't really. It's what lies behind the anti-Semitism that's the problem. It's, it's what's there already. For some, it's a concern that the Labour Party will raise their taxes or cripple industry. Um, what of it we have left, or even that it's going to allow the Muslim vote to get too much control over our policies. They're all unspoken, especially that one about the Muslim vote, but it's there. And for all these people, anti-Semitism is just a shorthand. And you Americans, <laughs> you're going to have to find your own shorthand for what the Democratic Party is doing with its unlimited, uncontrolled immigration and sanctuary cities and all the rest of it. Although maybe you're going to be more honest about it, uh, more direct. But meanwhile, back in the UK, we've had some pretty astonishing developments. Uh, uh, a lot of politicians degrade the language by calling every election historic. Uh, but in this case, it really is historic. For the first time in over 200 years, the voters are not being presented with a choice between, well, generally sort of left and, uh, well, a generally sort of left party and, and then one that's generally sort of right. But, well, that valuation depends on the zeitgeist, zeitgeist as to how you're going to define what centre is. But even back in the days of Disraeli and Gladstone, there wasn't that much difference between the two parties. But now we're being given a choice, well, between a couple of parties on the centre right, that is the Conservatives and the Brexit Party, and a couple of revolutionary communist parties on the left, that is the Lib Dems and the Labour. And as I said, I'm including the Lib Dems along with the Labour because they have ditched the idea that the vote of the people is sovereign. So however much they might present themselves as democratic and non-racist and, and all the rest of it, if they can't accept a vote, then they're tyrants. So back to the main event. We have two totalitarian system parties versus two democratic parties. And it looks like actually only one of them is going to be in power by the end of this particular gargantuan struggle. Let me explain. Either the Labour Party wins, in which case they will do away with any party 
that opposes them forever after, one way or the other, or the Conservatives will win, and they'll win with such a stonking majority uh, that they'll more or less have absolute power. I've been watching Twitter and Facebook and such, and I have hopes that at least it's going to be the Conservatives because they are at least nominally democratic and there will be a, a, a some small way of getting rid of them after a while. I, I've noticed that a lot of people who would r normally vote Labour are saying that's not what they're doing this time. Not just one or two isolated instances, but a whole lot of them. And that's because there's a whole new Conservative voter in the political landscape. Uh, th this is something I, I think that it's caught the analysts completely by surprise. Uh, to be frank, it's caught me by surprise as well, although maybe not quite so badly as the so-called professionals. You see, it used to be that people we defined as working class would vote Labour. This doesn't happen in America. You've got Republican working class and Democrat working class. But in Britain, you voted very much according to your class until fairly recently. Uh, and, and so if you were from a, an industrial city in Leeds, you know, uh, you know, if you were in the working class areas of any town, uh, saying you would vote Labour was as obvious as me saying, well, the sun's up, so it's daytime. You know, you, you wouldn't think it could be anything else. Uh, you, you used to get all these Welsh miners saying, well, you put a donkey up there with a red rosette and, and we'll vote for it. Well, that's not a very good Welsh accent. My apologies to Wales. The Welsh accent is very difficult to do. But you get the idea. Uh, I always thought that was a pretty stupid thing to say, by the way, that you'll vote for anything so long as it's got a red rosette. But there you are. The scars of the old class system died hard. Also, the scars left by Margaret Thatcher, the grim reaper of the old union bound heavy industries. It was for that reason that the Brexit party has made its biggest play for the constituencies in the old industrial areas of the North. Those areas used to vote Labour absolutely reliably, even though for years they've known that Labour was betraying them, but they just kept on doing it anyway. And they also knew that the Labour party was taking them for granted as Many Labour Party people said, uh, who else can the working class vote for? The thought that they might vote Conservative was just sort of out of the universe altogether. Well, to absolutely everyone's astonishment, that's just what many of them are planning on doing, voting Conservative. All that I hate the Tories stuff seems to be weakening. Um, yeah. Let me paint a picture for you. You have a wall. Ah, it's a big thick wall and behind it there's a lot of water. I mean, it's a really big thick wall so it can hold back an awful lot of water. Then you see a little trickle leaking out from between a couple of the bricks at the front. But that doesn't bother you too much because it's a big thick wall and there are many many bricks between you and the water on the other side then after a while you see one of the bricks is moving slightly it's shifting a bit it isn't straight anymore how can this happen there are so many bricks behind it how can they all be letting the water through but still you think there are plenty of bricks between you and the water behind that wall and then with a frightful creaking crashing sound the loose brick pops out and then another and then another and suddenly a flood of water is rushing through the newly created hole and more and more bricks start flying out and more and more water until the entire wall collapses whether or not that's a magnificent sight depends very much on where you're standing, doesn't it? Apparently, there have been a few focus groups which have astonished 
the trendy Guardian readers who are running the surveys. Uh, they've been getting some totally unexpected information. Look, just a few weeks ago, I'd have said that the Brexit party was going to sweep the board in the North. I'm not so sure now. And actually, I'm a bit disturbed about that because with Labour turning into a pile of scattered and sodden bricks in the slime and gravel and mud and welter of dead cats and random plants, that's the usual wreckage of a, a dam that was undermined by its own builders. Ah, there'll be no opposition of any strength left in the country after the election next week. And... I'm worried about how Boris Johnson will take that. Will he really do Brexit properly or will he do a half-hearted token and nobody will be able to stop him? We'll have the remnants of Labour, which will turn into a, a rabble of competing interests snapping at each other like hungry wolves and a Brexit party that might possibly get two or three seats, perhaps, perhaps ten. Not more, I don't think so, by the looks of things. And my only hope is the Labour Party started in 1900 and didn't get its first real swipe at power until the working classes, well, the men at any rate, all got the vote in 1918 and of course they all voted Labour, so it gave the Labour Party a sudden huge boost. The Brexit Party hasn't been allowed such a boost because no huge group of people has had um, such an input into Parliament now. Um, so they're going to remain small for a while, but someone has to take over the place which is left by the wreckage of the Labour Party. And uh, the only party I can see that has the right democratic credentials is the Brexit Party. Uh, Anyway, that's it. That's my rundown on um, what I think is happening uh, in the election. Get out and vote, all you guys. Interesting times we live in, aren't they? If you want to donate or contact, the information will be rolling over the Granny Opteryx as I speak. Please like, subscribe and share because it does help with the algorithm. If you visit my channel on YouTube and one day discover that I've disappeared without warning, you'll still find me on BitChute or Minds. Just go to either of those platforms and do a search for Granny Opteryx. If you're already watching this on BitChute or Minds, good for you. Meanwhile, if you're watching this on YouTube, remember that you must keep checking the subscribe and bell icons because occasionally they reset. Till next time.